Hello, everyone. Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church. We are the church today. I am working on my screen for just a minute. So as Bruce gave us the beautiful gesture, as you feel connected to us during the service, connected to your community of faith, and as you feel connected to God and one another, I hope you'll mark your moment by putting your hand over your heart and together we'll live and move and have our being together as a church. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world. A people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit wherever and however we gather unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we in the whole creation might be restored and renewed through jesus christ our lord amen let us hear the words of our holy scriptures A reading from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abram ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds of milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where's your wife, Sarah? He said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now, Abram and Sarah were old, advanced and aged. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I've grown old and my husband is old, shall I have a pleasure? The Lord said to Abram, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh, yes, you did laugh. <laughs> Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116, verse 1, and verses 10 through 17. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. 
precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. This is a reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely, <clears throat> indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went by about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Several years ago, I spent some time in Turkey, became good friends with a guide there named Denise Tufeksi. 
were hiking just outside of Ephesus. We turned a corner and the outline of a ruined Christian cathedral appeared. It was a huge gray stone church with a central dome that dominated the countryside. Grass grew between what was left of the roof tiles and the facade was crumbling. This shell of a once magnificent church was filled with litter and signs that it was now a place for the homeless and the alone and the forgotten. On the massive walls were still visible the, the fading frescoes, lambs of God and angels and medieval saints. In the dome, you could see one outstretched arm of the victorious Christ who had dominated the building centuries earlier. Christianity dived in Turkey, the land that gave birth to Paul, the land of Ephesus, Galatia, Colossae, Nicaea. Today, the Christian population of Turkey is less than 1%. The memory of that experience in Turkey lifted up for me the urgency of our gospel lesson this morning, the story of the plentiful harvest and the inadequate laborers. Matthew tells us that Jesus embraced, had compassion for the crowds that had been following him. They were the poor, the sick, the hungry, the cast out, and the alone. They were the lost and confused. And now they were followers of Jesus because they had finally found what they needed. They finally found what they were looking for. All of us here, Sunday after Sunday, as followers of Jesus, gather to pray. We gather around the Eucharistic table. We gather to read and to listen. We gather because we found what we need and what we're looking for. We gather to learn. We gather because we want to know what it means to be followers of Jesus. So I tried to imagine what it would be like. What would happen if Jesus walked in on us right now, Zoom bombed our service, much like he walked in on the disciples? He appears worn out with his hair hanging in his face and his clothes ringed with sweat and dirt. He looks around at all of us, sees us gathered here on the screen. The harvest is plentiful, he says. There's a lot of need out there, but the laborers are few. I need some help. And I'm here to ask all of you, I need your help. He holds his hands out in front of the camera, seemingly over each one of our heads. He says a prayer that travels down each one of our spines like a chill, giving us authority over demons, over disease, even over death. When he's finished, we open our eyes. We look at each other, wondering if we can say or tell any difference. We take a deep breath to test whether anything has changed inside. We start quietly texting each other. Do you feel wiser? Does anybody feel stronger? I quickly look at all of these text questions. I try and look hard at myself. Come on, Bruce, be honest. Nope, I don't feel any wiser. I don't feel any stronger. I feel blessed, sort of. I'm certainly curious and, well, ready, I think. Not for anything in particular, just generally ready, I hope, for whatever's next. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, just praying, as Porter said to us in his Monday meditation this past week, that I'm ready for whatever is next. Then Jesus starts calling us all out, just like he did with the disciples in Matthew's account. The upper left group here, you take on the hunger in this community. Focus on all of the food insecure children in our schools. The upper right group, you focus on healing, 
this pandemic has exposed the weakness in our public health system. The lower left hand group here, this country's wealth disparity, the racial bias built into the economic and political foundations of this country. I need you to help us understand and own our white privilege. We need to listen and learn how to live without discomfort. We need to own the problem, understand that as white people, we are the problem. We need to change our hearts and so much more. The lower right hand group, we're gonna be challenged. People are gonna tell us that the problems are too big, too complicated for such a small group as those of us gathered here. How can we hope to even make a dent into, let alone solve anything? But I wanna remind you, and I need you to remind us about what we just read a little while ago, about Abraham and Sarah, and how they laughed at God because they thought that what God had promised them, that Sarah would be a mother, was impossible. We're all gonna get laughed at. You are all gonna get laughed at. I'm asking you to help us live with that discomfort. Where two or three are gathered, you never know. We might be the tipping point. And Judith, I remember years ago, late 60s and 70s, a few disciples full of energy and purpose, running off in all directions. They were in the often wrong but never in doubt group of disciples. They didn't accomplish nearly what they had hoped. So I need you to slow us down, help center us, remind us of how much we still need to learn. Don't get me wrong, like I said, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few, but I need everyone mindful, bare feet grounded on mother earth. We need to own what we don't know in order to begin the process of mending and renewing. We've been treated generously, so we need to live generously. And with that, exhausted, Jesus signs off of our Zoom gathering. Some of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the book by Henry Nouwen, The Wounded Healer. It was published about 40 years ago and it Henry relates an old legend from the Talmud. Rabbi Yahshua ben Levi came upon Elijah, the prophet, while he was standing at the entrance of Rabbi Simeon ben Yohai's cave. He asked Elijah, when will the Messiah come? Elijah replied, go and ask him yourself. Where is he? asked Rabbi Levi. Sitting in the gates of the city, how shall I know him? He's sitting among the poor, covered with wounds. The others unbind all of their wounds at the same time, and then they bind them all up again at the same time. But he unbinds one at a time, and then binds it up again one at a time, saying to himself, perhaps I shall be needed. If so, I must always be ready so as not to delay for a moment. This Henry said is how healing works. It takes place when the wounded offer themselves to the wounded. When we're able to gather again in our building and return to our unabridged Zoomless liturgy at the end of every service, while the last word of the last hymn is ringing in the air. A voice from the back of the church, often Christie's, says, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. These are not words for consumers of God's love. These are words for the providers. That is God's charge to us. Judith finds a way to remind us each week that we are the church. The building is not the church. 
Jesus doesn't tell his, his followers to establish churches in fixed locations and gather there regularly in order to be the church or to follow his teachings. Jesus sends them and us. And he repeatedly tells them and tells us to go. A bold going out into the world, what it means to be followers of Jesus. We're called to see the need of the world, its hungers and confusion. We're called to compassion and to respond. We're called to be on the move and to be open to those we meet along the way. This is our reason for being the church. Dion Johnson, recently elected Bishop of the Episcopal Church in the Diocese of Missouri, put it this way. The work of the church is essential. The work of caring for the lonely, the marginalized, and the oppressed is essential. The work of speaking truth to power and seeking justice is essential. The work of being a loving, liberating, and life-giving presence in the world is essential. The work of welcoming the stranger, the refugee, and the undocumented is essential. The work of reconciliation and healing and caring is essential. The church does not need to open because the church never closed. We're wounded but we're still asked to be a part of the healing. I remember the first time I celebrated communion as a priest. The other priest with me was Devet Turk. She was a former Catholic nun and the first woman ordained a priest in the Diocese of Florida. She worked with the homeless and the inner city poor. As we were lifting the elements, I noticed her hand. They were the hands of the suffering servant of Christ. They were rough, calloused, and scarred. Hands not afraid to serve the one who also possessed wounded hands. Afterwards, she talked about how truly moved she always was that people could come to the foot of the cross and be overcome by the love of Christ. And then she said, some people stay at the foot of the cross never climb up on the cross to see what Jesus sees. This is where being a wounded healer begins. Climbing up on the cross to see what Jesus sees and to feel what Jesus feels. Finally, I want to share with you a prayer from Thomas Merton that Ron Rios recently shared with a small group of us. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I'm following your will does not mean that I'm actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I'm doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are ever with me and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. And gratefully, as Anne Lamott reminds us, grace, that's last. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, 
that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We celebrate the birth of Shepherd, born to Andrew and Sadie Ginn. We hold these persons in prayer. Cindy, Vinnie, Kathy, Charles, Charles, Winnie, Sam, Victoria, Christine, Susan, Jim, Sarah, Carlin, Soraya, Jocelyn, Joe, Michael, Jim, and Kalina and her parents, John, Janice, David, Daniel, Case, Emily, Brad, Betty, Margaret, and Courtney. All right, I just confessed for all of us, but now we'll do it all together. <laughs> you couldn't hear me, I don't think. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen.
we'll celebrate we will celebrate eucharistic prayer a today together you can follow in the bulletin or in your heart the lord be with you lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ. It is by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us pray, Holy One, present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. With thanksgiving, we proclaim your resurrection in us and in the world. In the sacrament of this moment, I recognize the sacrament that you are in me and in this community of faith. Reside spiritually in us, in our body, in our minds, in our spirits, that we would be strengthened by your love and made one in you and in one another. We live in you and you in us in this moment, in this life, and in the life that is to come. 
Amen. And this eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that his light may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God who creates us, who will redeem us and give us new life be upon us this day and remain with us always. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. So... Um, I have a few announcements. Um, number one is that um, the labyrinth is going to be installed this afternoon in the narthex of the church. Um, it is a no, uh, if you've never prayed the labyrinth and you're in a position to be in the church, I encourage you to try it. It is a walking meditation. It'll take you about 20 minutes, half hour, and then you can also be in the nave and pray some afterwards if you like. But it is a bodily prayer um, that moves you physically inside and then out again and in and out. And um, I am going to walk the labyrinth this week considering the world and what I need to do internally in myself and also in the world. And so I invite you to consider that as, as what you might want to bring to the labyrinth. There are anything you can bring to the labyrinth, but sometimes it's helpful to bring a particular prayer into the labyrinth space and let ground yourself in that and walk the labyrinth with an intention. Um, I want to say a couple of things about it. It is a no touch experience. We have very strict rules at St. James, and if you cannot um, follow them for any number of reasons, even in the, with the best of intentions, I ask that you not come. Um, you do need to wear a mask on campus at all times. The labyrinth walk is a no-touch experience, so there's a docent that will open the door for you, that will see you coming and open the door for you. Um, you and the docent will be very far apart, and you will be the only person in the room walking the labyrinth. Um, the exception of that is if families would like to come, mothers with children, fathers with children, that is fine. You're welcome to be in. I'm calling you a germ unit. Your germ unit can come together, and you may walk. But um, we are going as single germ units to do the labyrinth. Um, you will enter through the red doors and exit. We're one way, like the grocery store, in the front doors, and you'll go out the side doors. Um, bathrooms are one at a time, and they're disinfected after each use. And there are also four prayer stations in the nave if you would like to pray. And you can come and do that if you don't want to walk the labyrinth. You need to enter from the office side doors to do that. Um, there are, I'm going to have books in the library. Um, you can come and bring out a spirituality book if you would like to do that during this time as well. Um, again, enter from the office side so you're not in the labyrinth space. Um, those books will have been wiped down. Please don't touch them all. You just got to look at them and feel the vibe and pick up your one book. Um, anything else about that? We actually have 25, I'll come to you in just that, Christy, I see you, 25 copies of White Fragility, which we had bought before the world closed in with the pandemic, intending to read it as a community. You can't buy that book. Um, now it's sold out. If anybody would like a copy, you can buy one also during the hours of the labyrinth. We'll have them set up um, on a table, um, there's a gardening bench outside the office saying those books will be set up out there. You can pick up one and poke your money in an envelope um, if you would like one of those books. 
Um, just wanted you to know you can actually get them at the bookstore at St. James Church. Um, people have asked about a couple of things, what we are doing and thinking about around um, Black Lives Matter. Um, we are working on some ways to gather as a community to do some reflection, and I anticipate that starting in a couple of weeks. So you will hear more about that. Um, I invite you to consider the labyrinth as an internal process around what is happening. Um, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, I wanted to alert you to that, uh, to just tell you that Reverend Barber is preaching today at the National Cathedral. And um, because you came to St. James, you probably missed that opportunity, but it is recorded. And I, I think that is a great way to ground yourself in this moment um, in your faith is to hear, if you have not heard him, to hear him preach. And so you could find that later today on the National Cathedral website. And with that, I will go to you, Christy Neal. All right, two things. Uh, one, uh, one thing is with the labyrinth, you may not walk it barefooted. You must wear socks. So if you're coming in your sandals, bring a pair of socks with you. Um, that's, the, the, that's part of the rules of the people who are from whom we're getting the labyrinth. So please remember to bring your socks. And then the second thing is that we have some members of our church who do not have computers or internet or any of that stuff. Um, not many, but a couple. And so if you have an old laptop or an iPad laying around your house that you would like to um, donate to the church so that we can set up some stations for people uh, to access the Sunday service. Um, we would really appreciate that. And if you'll just give me a call or send me an email or a text message or whatever, we'll see what we can do about getting that straightened out. Thank you. Right. All right, so beautiful to see everybody. I'm gonna, un oh, Brenda, did you wanna say something or are you just waving to say hi? I have a question about the yard signs. Yeah. Uh, um, will you tell us again how we can pick one of those up? Right, um, we have not ordered them yet. Um, oh. I'm discerning that I wanna take a bit of time um, and do some work as a community um uh, to actually be thinking through and navigating the work that we are committing to on the signs so um they take a bit they take a while to get um but they're not they're not with us yet and um i want us to be engaging in the work um at the same time that we're proclaiming it in the world so um they they will come but not not quite yet um, but I, I just want to assure you all that we're deeply engaged in um, looking at how we can, I, I am putting my every spare second into looking at how we can best engage this as a community, um, both internally and in the world. Lot, lots to come, but um, I'm really feeling called to be dis deeply discerning and um, grounded in that. And so I really encourage you to be prayerful about what you're called to, to um, there's a lot of good information um, to listen to, um, not just what you think, but what, um, let's be listening to our African American, um, indigenous and people of color, those voices. I, I think that's the very first thing you can do is to read Wiley. Ron Riffle, um, I think Oprah Winfrey, did a spectacular job um, this week on the OWN Network. You can Google it. She had two hours worth of conversations with people of color and it was really powerful. I, I appreciate people sending me what they're finding. It, it's super helpful, particularly to find things where um, the message is condensed and powerful so people can access it without reading large books. Um, um, we can we can learn this. We can hear voices 
in a number of ways and a lot of people have access to video now so it's it's really powerful to hear the voice and to see the face um, so we're going to make more of that again available and and be pushing those voices forward in the coming weeks is there a way to interact with our local police or have uh, sort of bring them into this discussion or is that part of what uh, St. James may think about? It is definitely something to think about. I, I go back to a beautiful story of David McNair um, letting Holy Spirit, um, they hosted an event for the Latino women who were cooked in the church and the police just to sit down and have a meal together and to hear one another's stories. Um, I think the discernment is, um, is what belongs to us and what is our primary work. And um, so all of this are possibilities, all of it's important. And I'm doing a lot of listening, a lot of listening and, and talking um, to people about the, the most prudent way to proceed. Um, and a lot of it honestly has to do with us doing a lot of our own work right now as people, as white people. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I saw Bill Haskamp, then Brian. I, I'm, I'm not going to unmute everybody. I hate to be a taskmaster here and call on people, but I think it's the easiest way for everybody to hear everybody's voices. Judith, I, I'm not sure if I missed it or if you did not say that the labyrinth is by uh, reservation only. It is by, yes, it is by reservation only. That's such a horrible thing to have to say, um, but it is, it's by reservation. Um, Melissa will send out another link to that this afternoon. Um, and you can also, I believe, link to the sign up on the website. Um, but yes, it is, um, it is by reservation only for all the reasons that are, you know. It's so we can keep everybody safe and that people can really come and have a no touch experience. So, yeah. And we have it for two weeks, all this weekend, all this week and the following week. Anything else? We can just unmute everybody and go for it. See if I can figure out how to do that. 